Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, 1 p.m. Let's let's kick off on time. Um, you're very welcome to our webinar for the Postgraduate Certificate in Project Management. Thank you for giving up your lunchtime today. We aim to finish well in advance of 2 p.m. So my name is Dr. Gillian Barrett. I am Programme Director for the Postgraduate Certificate in Project Management. And today I'm joined by my colleagues, Senna Ensko, Executive Education Manager, and Seamus Collins, Managing Director of Valopi. Valopi is a project management training provider and a key partner in delivering this programme. And both Senna and Seamus will int introduce themselves shortly. We are also delighted to be joined by a recent graduate of our MSc in Project Management, Niamh Gillen, and also by our current student on the Postgraduate Certificate Programme, Dolores Horan. And both Niamh and Dolores will sh share their motivations and experiences of their respective programmes in a short while. So a particular thank you to Niamh and Dolores. The purpose of this webinar is to share with you some insights into the Postgraduate Certificate in Project Management. We will share with you the benefits, the content of the under underlying modules, the delivery mechanism, the supports available to you, and also how to apply. But before I begin, I would like to inform you that the Q&A and chat functions are open to you and available for you to share some questions or comments. And also, just to inform you, this session is being recorded. I would like to start with a very brief introduction to UCC and to COVES. So Queen's College Cork, later becoming University College Cork, formally came into existence on the 30th of December 1945. And from 115 students in 1849, UCC has grown to over 24,000 students and 3,200 staff. Our student body includes over 4,000 international students from 138 countries worldwide. We offer 120 degree programmes across four colleges. Number one, the Arts, Celtic, Celtic Studies and Social Sciences College, Business and Law, Medicine and Health and Science, Engineering and Food Science. And we have over 100 million in research income and over 200,000 alumni worldwide. UCC is the world's first green campus and ranked in the top 2% of universities worldwide. Cork University Business School, COBS, we are a key part of UCC's academic offering and we are part of the College of Business and Law. COBS is the largest business school in Ireland with the largest number of full-time undergraduate students and the second largest number of full-time graduate students. And we have the largest amount of research income. We are home to four departments, accounting and finance, business information systems, economics, food business and development, and finally, management and marketing, of which I am a key member. COBS is composed of over 130 permanent professors and academic lecturers that are actively engaged in consultancy and business relevant research, working closely with leading global companies and policymakers to bring expertise into the classroom research centres and projects. And COBS achieved a double ACSB accreditation in 2022 and the AMBA accreditation in 2020. Now I would like to talk to you about the programme. So the Postgraduate Certificate in Project Management. What is this programme? It is a part-time hybrid programme, NFQ Level 9 Minor Award, which I'll come to in, in a later point. This programme provides a balance of technical, managerial and interpersonal skills that maximises the impact of project managers in private, public and not-for-profit organisations. So regardless of your industry, your market or your organisation type or size, this programme might be for you. This programme is designed for those wishing to formally formalise, apologies, their, their project management qualification and to further develop their project management career or maybe undertake the project management professional exams, PMP exams from the Project Management Institute and achieve a highly prestigious sought after academic qualification plus develop the necessary PM knowledge and skills. So maybe you are already in the role of PM, but do not have the qualifications either professionally or academically, or is this a career aspiration for you to enter the project management profession? What are the benefits of this programme? So the curriculum is relevant, it's current, it's research informed and incorporates industry best practice. This programme is delivered by academic staff in COBS, many of whom are experienced project managers, in conjunction with our industry partner and accredited PMI education provider, Valapi. 
It provides participants with the required hours and exam preparation for the PMP exams from the Project Management Institute. And this collaboration between UCC and Velopi offers a unique programme to the marketplace, providing candidates with an internationally recognised academic and professional accreditation in project management. So how do we deliver this programme? And one of the key strengths, I believe, is the programme delivery. This is a part-time programme delivered over one year through attendance at lectures, both online and on campus, and importantly, using self-study dedicated learning methods. The programme runs from the middle of September to the middle of May. And a hybrid approach of delivery and assessment is used. Delivery is online, so one class per week on a Wednesday evening, 6.30 to 9.30, and in person on the UCC campus, one day per month typically. And a hybrid approach to assessment is also used using a range of continuous assessment methods, such as presentations, essays, personal reflections, case study, online discussion forums, and a simulated exam in preparation for the PMP certificate examination. And throughout the programme, students will work individually, but also within groups. So what does this programme look like? What is your pathway from September in semester one right through to May in, se in semester two? So beginning of, sorry, the middle of September, we have a full day orientation, which is on campus. From there, you will commence the project management principles module, which is 10 credits. You will have two days on campus plus nine um, online three hour classes or thereabouts. Next, moving on, so that will take you up until the middle of November. So from the middle of November to the middle of December, you will take a management and organisation module, which is five credits. And it's one day on campus and five online three hour classes on a Wednesday evening. Post Christmas, the middle of January, you will commence the project boot camp, which is the PMP certification. That's five credits. Again, similar to the other you know, five credit module, it's one day on campus and five online three hour classes. Moving from there, the middle of February, you will take the effective project management module, another five credit module, one day on campus and five online three hour classes. And finally, your last module is the current developments in project management one day again one day on campus and five online three-hour classes which takes you right up to the middle of may for completion so in summary we have five modules 30 credits the first module the project management principles is 10 credits that's the only module that is 10 credits and the four other modules are five credits Now, you've heard me mention the term NFQ level nine and credits. So what do these terms mean? So the half moon image on the right hand side is depicting what's called the NFQ, the National Framework of Qualifications. I would really like to highlight the importance of this. So the Irish National Framework of Qualifications is a 10 level system used to describe qualifications in the Irish educational training system. And this allows you to compare qualifications to help you with your choice of programme. It also provides recognition at home in Ireland or abroad also. And the Postgraduate Certificate in Project Management programme is NFQ level nine minor awards. So it's 30 credits. And in UCC, we use the ECTS credit system, which stands for the European Credit Transfer System. And these credits represent learning based on your defined learning outcomes and associated workload. And it enhances the flexibility of study programmes for students. And finally, it supports the planning, delivery and evaluation of higher education programmes. So on the right hand side, that half moon, the bottom of the blue is where we are pitched in terms of the, the Irish national framework of qualifications. So I just mentioned the term learning outcomes. So at the end of this programme, students should be able to first demonstrate advanced analytical and problem solving skills associated with effective project management practice. You should be able to apply practical techniques and conceptual models in order to maximise the value of the project management process. You should be able to critically appraise how projects contribute 
overall to an organization's ability to realize its strategic goals and business benefits. And you should be able to communicate and work effectively to a high professional standard. And finally, you should be able to apply strategic thinking and leadership skills to projects of various sizes and also complexity. Next, both Seamus and I will introduce you to the content and I will take you through a brief introduction to some of the content of the programme. But before I do that, I would like to hand over to my colleague Seamus Collins from Valapi, who will introduce you to two of our key modules on this programme. Thanks very much, Seamus. OK, uh, thank you, Gillian. Um, I just want to talk you through the two modules I'm involved with, and um, it's nearly coming up on eight, nine years since uh, we originally launched the programme. And uh, way back before we started, we said, and just to highlight and reiterate some of the points Gillian has made, the, the foundation, I suppose, module here is MG6810. And you can look at any of these book of in the UCC book of modules. You can see the learning outcomes, et cetera, and read more into the content. But part of the, I suppose, the reasoning for uh, partnering with a company like us was to make sure, I suppose, that yes, we have the academic um, uh, rigor and the academic stretch at level nine, but also to bring in um, core concepts and get that foundation right. So a lot of people might be already practicing as project managers, but this really was to get that foundation and reiterate it. And, you know, there's core modules in here, uh, like scope, schedule, cost, quality, resource, communication, risk, procurement, stakeholder management, all those core concepts based, uh, you know, on, you know, not just on the PMI, the PMBOK from the PMI, the body of knowledge, but also then taking it further with other academic uh, research papers, other books that we will refer to, et cetera. And I suppose that, you know, may, gets that foundation right for every student. So when they leave the course, they've got a very good view on how to take a project from initiating, where we look at things like implementing the strategy of the organization, making sure you are strategically aligned, working it through, initiating, uh, developing that and then to a full project management plan, taking them through execution, best practices, understanding concepts like forecasting, statusing and the monitor and control, and eventually then closing out and doing lessons learned. So it's taking up projects right through their life cycle, focusing on a different topic each week and using case studies, using real projects, using academic papers to tease out the understanding and to give people a deeper uh, understanding of each topic. The, I suppose the main thing, as I said, it's to include practical applications. So really to, I suppose, and we bring in industry guest speakers. We have a lot of connections into industry, bringing different speakers in during the course to give different perspective. Because if you come from a medical device or a pharma, you might have totally different perspective to someone coming from a charity background, a not-for-profit background, a banking background. So it's to give people different points of views and to take them out of their comfort zone by having those discussions. Um, the assessment of this, we're very cognizant that the people coming on the course are busy people. And the timetable is set up like that, you know, the Wednesday nights, um, we'll, you know, work with people to record sessions, et cetera. But we also then on the live days in campus, you know, it's it's not too onerous. You know, it's one day per month, as Gillian outlined, and it's usually it's on a Friday. And uh, people look forward to that kind of, you know, communal get together on campus and really learn from each other as much as they learn from from the lecturer. I suppose the other thing there, just to highlight maybe and dig into this idea of continuous assessment, um, it's not one big exam where there's huge pressure building up and some people might have come from a time in UCC or a different institution where you had a big exam at the end. It's not done like that. We have a few different ways of assessing this module. And the main one is, is we're doing portfolios of work, uh, reflections, group case studies, etc. So you'll do some work individually and you'll do some work as part of a group, OK? But again, it's a lot of reflective writing, et cetera, in some cases to say, OK, how are you going to uh, 
What have you learned and how are you going to apply that now going forward? So reflection is a big part of, of, of the assessment here, as well as I said, the group case studies and your own individual work. Um, there is a huge amount of support as well. So do not be afraid of, you know, academic writing or anything like that, because the college has some fabulous supports to help you through it, not just from me as the lecturer helping you through the module, but the support from um, there's a lot of supports there from uh, different uh, groups in the college to help you unpack the question, to help you write an answer, to help you structure your answer, et cetera, et cetera. The second module I'm involved with is the five credit module is the PMP bootcamp. And originally why this was included, just to give the, the background to this, in industry, Velipi would have been delivering a lot of PMP training and we'd have met people coming on our programs that were doing PMP certification. And I'd often say to people, why are you doing uh, the PMP? You have a master's or something. And they'd say, yeah, but industry wants me to have it. Or the, the next job I'm going for PMP certification is a, a gating criteria and I need to get it. So when we put together the program with UCC, this was one of the key things is give them both give them the level nine qualification, but also include the PMP certification because and, and that's a double win for people. And again, you can see the logo up here on the right hand corner. We're an authorized training partner from the PMI. So what does this mean? Well, it means we've got the latest materials, approved materials from the PMI. Uh, our trainers are approved trainers from the PMI. So you're not getting a diluted version. You're getting the, the right, latest notes, the latest training, uh, the latest everything. And we've got a number of supports then to help people through this. So, you know, we go through all the content with people. We give them access to mock exams. We help them with the application process to the PMI. You know, we meet the 35 hours training requirement that you need. And I suppose, again, it's support all the way through. So when you do the internal exam in UCC, we will know your percentage. We know we have a good feeling. Then can you pass the real exam? We give you further guidance after that. And then you have to sit the actual exam at a, a test center or uh, you can take it from home in what we call a proctored exam where you log in online and you take um, the exam under supervision from someone in the PMI as well. So it's a very um, well structured uh, module. And as I said, it's giving the students something they want. So if you're at the moment debating, oh, will I do something, uh, you know, I don't know, some postgraduate qualification in project management or will I do the PMP? I suppose we've put a lot of thought into here. So why don't why, why does it have to be either or? Why can't we have both? And I suppose that that's why this is included for you as well. And I'm happy to. Great, thanks a million, Seamus. Sorry, you're going off my screen now. So um, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll take you through the other modules. So that will bring you to 15 credits. There are three other modules at five credits each. So the first one that I'll introduce you to is what's called the Effective Project Manager. So this module is all about you and your role as an effective PM. So much of the time is learning about what we call the technical side of project management. In this module, we focus on the human element or what we call the art of project management. We look at building your skills and competencies as effective project managers and leaders, Under, understanding your leadership style and how this style may have an impact on project teams. You know, you'll explore your personal management style also, understand the challenges that all of you are facing as project management as project managers in today's workplace and also demonstrate you know oral and written com written communication skills to professional standard so we look at you know emotional intelligence we look at communication skills we look at negotiation skills also so very very interesting um, module to teach and and also from the, the learning from the students is is very evident um, next, my colleague, Dr. Damien Tobin, um, takes this module management and organization. So essentially, if you think about the, the overarching piece around the organization, the importance of the, of the organization. And this module takes a, a critical look at why organization organizations matter, and in particular, why management matters. 
So looking at formal, informal and temporary structures of, of organisations, looking at topics such as culture, power, conflict and politics and differentiate between concepts and practices of managing and leading projects and critically analysing relationships between stakeholders, managers and ethical behaviour. And finally explaining, you know, why do organisations fail? And finally, current developments in project management. In this module, students will explore recent developments and trends within the project management function, both from a theoretical perspective, from an academic perspective, but also in terms of practice. So you will be critically assessing the project management function using the, the literature, using the theory, identifying and critically evaluating troubled projects, exploring developments and alternative project management practices, technologies and methodologies, and evaluating the effectiveness of such developments in, in supporting and enabling your role. So that brings us to the end of the content. And I know it's a very, very short tour, um, but again, as I mentioned up from the outset, we are available to answer any questions or queries you may have. So now I'm going to hand you over to Niamh Gillen and Dolores Horan. First, Niamh, congratulations to Niamh. Niamh, who graduated last week with an MSc in project management. So thanks, Niamh, for your time today. And then I will hand over to Dolores, who will share her experience as she is living and breathing this, this program right now. Um, so I'll hand, hand it over to, to Niamh just for a few moments. So thank you, Niamh. Great. Thanks a million, Gillian, and thanks for the nice words. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for yourself and Seamus there. So thanks a million for getting me to, to the end. Um, so yeah, look, I guess for me, one of the motivations for undertaking the, the MSc in project management was that I had, I guess, a technical undergraduate degree. And I found that to be quite a limiting factor whenever I was looking for, for jobs um, because a lot of organisations, I suppose you, you can be practising and doing project management on a daily basis. But again, as I think was mentioned earlier in the slideshow, without, I guess, formally qualifying um, all of those skills through the PMP or some sort of qualification, it's very hard to get that across um, um, to, to recruiters or to hiring managers. So for me, it was really about being able to pro progress my own career in the direction, I guess, I, I saw it going. And I think I had a very keen interest in project management because I worked initially in Arvia in the major projects division. And we had very, very good guidelines and process and procedures around project management. So you kind of fell into it quite quickly. Um, and I think then for, you know, just general career progression, having an MSc from UCC as well um, was able to give me pretty good standing um, going forward too. So I think aside from the actual project management, as in, you know, the hardcore, your scope, your risk, your schedule, what I really got from this course as well was, I guess, the wider business context in which projects are occurring. And, you know, Seamus would have said to us like very early on, like, why are you doing a project? And I know that's such a simple question and you'd be like, oh, yeah, because my manager told me to do it. But even just getting that development of thinking around the management and organization piece, you know, why an organization exists? Why is it operating in this industry? And having all of that, I think, help, helps you streamline right down to the project level why you're undertaking this work and why you're managing this work and for me that was really really powerful because I've been able to really implement that thinking in my day-to-day -day job now and knowing when a project is or isn't aligned with I guess the overall strategic objectives of an organization and that is definitely not something I had before undertaking this um this course um the PMP itself is so well taught. I mean, you're really, really set up for success, I think, in undertaking that exam through the different um, preparation exams that you can do and then through the simulator as well. So again, as Shima said, you really know where you are before going in to take that exam as well. Um, but I think as just on, on a wider business scale, it just really, really helped me way beyond just I suppose the project management, which is why I would really recommend this course to anybody is because it does bring you so much further than the project management piece because, you know, project management is a lot about the people as well and getting work done through managing various stakeholders. 
So being able to link into and I suppose assess those interpersonal skills and those softer elements of project management as well is is really, really vital. And I think, you know, how has this benefited me as well undertaking this course? Because look, realistically, we have to get some sort of benefit out of out of undertaking and giving this amount of work and effort um, into something. And, you know, midway through my project management course, mine was a two year course, I got a promotion before I'd even finished out um, the, the course for one. And then once the course had finished, I actually left the organization for another, I suppose, career progression opportunity. So I have found, and I know a lot of my, my friends from the course as well have found that this has been really beneficial for, for career progression as well. And, and to help us, I suppose, seek out opportunities that maybe we weren't able to go for um, before undertaking this course as well. And um, so I think that's probably a very quick summary. Um, I personally would highly recommend it. And I got way more out of this course than what I initially expected. And I'm really happy for anybody who who wants to have an offline conversation to to drop me an email or whatever. If you want to ask questions of the lectures, not sitting there. Um, if anybody would like that. So thanks, Steve. Very important. Yes. <laughs> I close my ears. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thanks very much for your insights. They're really, really valuable. Um, I'll now hand you over to, to Dolores, if I may, if you would outline your current experience as you live and breathe this program. Sure. Thanks, Gillian. So, as Gillian mentioned, I'm currently a student um, on the postgraduate certificate. So just to give some background, I have been working with ESB Networks since 2007. Um, and previously would have worked in an operational role as a team leader um, within New Connections itself. So as that business unit, we look after applications from all over the country for people looking for electricity connections for their new homes and businesses. Um, but approximately a year and a half ago, I moved to a project role where I'm looking after the next release of the online application process for the New Connections business unit. So I work with a third party contractor for the delivery of that project and I'm, amongst other things, I'm the business representative on the team, so I'm the voice of the customer. So when that opportunity came up, um, like earlier last year, I decided to make an application to UCC for the project management certificate. Um, it was an ideal opportunity as I saw it, to complement my situational learning and the fact that the course was hybrid as well really appealed to me. I, I spend probably like a lot of people, I spend a lot of my day on teams, meetings and so on. So the opportunity to go into UCC and actually meet people and learn from other people as well was um, it was a big attraction for me. Um, the benefits for me then uh, in situationally is that it was critical for me going into that role to have a really good understanding of what best practice actually looked like and the PMP module definitely uh, addressed that that uh, side of the learning for me but similar to me if what I would say is that all of the other softer skills that are addressed on the course are beneficial no matter what role that you go into, be it purely project or be it operational, because, you know, our organization is going through a huge uh, transformation at, at the moment and people are at, at, at the back, I suppose, are core part of change. So understanding all of that and understanding even more now, having complete, nearly completed the course at this stage, stakeholder management and all that's involved in that. Um, has been a huge benefit to me. So what I would say to anybody considering doing the course is that it uh, will be beneficial to you no matter what role you go into within your organisation, be it projects or operational. And i um, certainly glad that I did it. And as I say, a huge benefit in the hybrid model that's uh, there in UCC at the moment. Um, yeah, and that's it from me, really. 
Great. Thanks a million, Dolores. And and both both you and Liam, I really appreciate the time you've given us today. So and out of your busy schedules, we really appreciate that. So thanks very much. Um, I am now going to hand you over to Senan. So Senan is our executive education manager and he will provide you with information on the application process and the entry requirements. So over to you, Senan. Thanks very much. Thanks, Gillian. And again, just to echo Gillian's welcome earlier, and thank you for taking everyone to, taking the time to join with us this afternoon. Um, so just in terms of the actual application requirements, we do have a number of threshold entry requirements for the programme, um, uh, which we've detailed here on the screen. So um, in terms of educational background, we will be looking for a second class honours grade two in a primary honours degree um, or an equivalent and at least two years industrial experience. Now, it's important to say that we do give consideration to recognition of prior learning. Um, so if you if you if you do not fully meet the, that criteria, but you have significant senior professional experience in related field, um, so such as engineering, construction, operations and software development, we've detailed there, but there may be, may be other areas as well. Um, we would encourage you, encourage you to contact us and just to have that discussion to, um, to see how we can gauge um, that, that, that prior learning and that, that professional experience. So um, just that is an important um, element just to consider. Now, uh, as part of the application process, we do require people to complete a motivation statement. Um, and I'll come on to um, more information about that uh, shortly. Um, in general, in terms of participants, um, will be selected on the basis of the information supplied in the application um, and uh, other supplementary application uh, that information that's provided as part of the application process. And just to note as well, that the university does reserve the right to, in the, uh, to interview applicants um, to help the university make determinations. Now, in terms of the application overview itself, um, the applications are made through our um, main application portal, which is uh, ucc.ie um, apply. Um, now, when you go onto that website, uh, we would, you would be choosing the postgraduate courses option. Um, you will need to create an account on UCC um, apply, which is a very straightforward process. Uh, once you have set up your account and you go into the My Account page, um, you would be choosing the Create a New Application option. Um, and once you click on that, it will initially ask you just to enter your personal details. Uh, so again, just your name, address, contact details, nationality details, residence, domicile. Uh, and then you would move on to the program selection um, part of the application. Uh, and in this you would be choosing, uh, there's a number of drop down tabs here. So you'd be choosing the postgraduate talk tab, which leads you on then to the next tab, which would be clicking for the uh, postgraduate certificate. Uh, and once you've chosen that option, then you would scroll to project management PG cert option, uh, which would be starting autumn 2023. Um, the next stage of the process then is you will be asked to enter details about your educational background. So um, in this area, in this section, there is a, a, an input field where you would put in the name of your institution. And um, I would just say you'd, you'd need to put in the full name of your institution here rather than any uh, abbreviations. So if you went to um, University College Cork, you would write out University College Cork rather than UCC. Uh, similarly, um, University College Dublin, if you went to UCD, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you put your full institution, full name of the institution, and um, you then ask, be asked to input uh, details of the uh, subject or title of, of the uh, programme study that you undertook, start and finish dates, the final grades, um, or the class uh, that you achieved, uh, and also you just indicate what grading scheme um, the institution uh, utilised, would be GPA, other R percentage. So here we would ask you to add in uh, whatever qualifications you feel are relevant to the application. Um, so obviously, whatever your primary uh, qualification is, and then any additional qualifications you may have uh, achieved post um, post graduation of your primary degree. So that could be even um, continuing professional development um, uh, programs that you've undertaken. Again, we would encourage you to put in uh, that information as well. Um, next stage of the application then process is the work experience um, section where again uh, you're asked to add uh, your professional experience. So again, you can add in as uh, as many um, of those as, as you feel are relevant to the application process. So again, you'd be putting in the title um, of your 
of your job title uh, in, in any particular um, company's name with the employer, again, start, finish dates, and importantly, the duties and responsibilities that you held within within each of those roles. So again, if there's any instances, obviously, um, you know, examples of project management roles, team leadership roles, budgetary management roles, uh, anything that you feel is relevant to the application, we would encourage you to put into those duty and responsibility fields. Uh, coming then to the motivation statement. So the motivation statement here is really uh, it's describing your motivation and readiness for the program. It's a minimum of 500 words, maximum of 1000 words. Um, Gillian, do you want to say a few words about what you'd expect to see on that? Sure, thanks. Thanks, Alan. So this is all about you. Uh, what's driving you in terms of your application? What's motivating you to complete? Um, tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit about your your background, your experience and what you hope to achieve from this and why is this important for you? Just be honest, um, that's all I ask when I review these. These are really important for, for us as we review applications. If you're unsure regarding the, the entry requirements at all, please, please reach out to us, drop Senan or I an email. We just don't want you to see that as a barrier. If you are you know, very keen and very motivated, you have the work experience, but you don't have the education, please reach out and have a conversation with us. Our doors are open. We really want to engage with you on that. Um, sometimes all you need is maybe just a little bit of encouragement and support, and we're, we're certainly we're certainly open to that and available for you to, to help you with this um, process. So yeah, so just be open and honest with us in terms of the motivation piece. Yeah, I suppose the motivation piece is, is it's a great opportunity to put um, just to, to flesh yourself out in a sense, really, isn't it? You know, um, because again, I suppose the, the application process up until that point is quite generic, you know, your your personal details, your employment history, et cetera. But it's it's a the motivation statement, it really is a chance to humanize yourself and, and to give, you know, Gillian and, and, and Seamus a good opportunity to kind of get a, a good 360 view of, of yourself where you want to go with the qualification as well, you know. Um so in terms of the application decisions, applications to the programme are considered and offers of places and the programme are made on, a, on an ongoing basis, so it's a, on, a, on a rolling basis. Now, just to say that the closing date for applications is the 3rd of July, um, so we would encourage early applications, I suppose, as the number of places on, on the programme are limited. Now, um, we've put a link up there as well, just in terms of general application support and any uh, FAQs that, that people would, would have about the application process itself. That would be a, the, the, the main UCC support page. But in terms of any, again, just echoing what Gillian is saying there, in terms of any general queries regarding um, the programme, uh, please reach out and contact us. Uh, Gillian's contact details are there. My email address is there and also my telephone number is there. So um, again, coming back to that, if you do have any questions or doubts about whether you're meeting those entry threshold requirements, contact us straight away, have that conversation with us, you know, and we'll be able to we'll be able to um, give you give you a, have a good chat with you and, 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 and work through those questions and answers with you. you know? Yeah, great. Thanks Vivian, for that. Senan. Um, so this was mentioned earlier in terms of the supports that are available to you. So um, we'd just like to share some supports that are open to all students in UCC. And we're conscious that for many of you, returning to academia can be a big decision and maybe very daunting. Um, so we endeavour to support you in any way we can. So and one way we do that in UCC is through our skill centre, as mentioned earlier. So the skill centre is a dedicated, responsive and active learning space for the enhancement of study and writing skills. And the goal in the skill centre is to enhance the experience through the provision of customised workshops, sessions and online resources. So there's a, an in-person space for you within the library, but also an online space as well. So they offer a free and friendly space for all students to come and improve study skills, writing techniques, presentation skills, referencing skills, etc. And workshops are offered, for example, in academic writing, academic referencing, note taking in class and making presentations, which are very important. So and, and also, you know, how do you conduct a literature review? How do you complete a reflection, as was mentioned earlier? All, these are all important skills for students to develop. And the Skill Centre is certainly there to support all of you. Um, the career service is also a tremendous support to all students, regardless of your stage in your career. They provide one to one career sessions, interview preparation and digital tools as well to help you with 
the targeting of your CV and your cover letter. As we all know, the use of AI is, is prevalent amongst those, so they will really help you in refining that message. Um, so thank you for your time today. We very much appreciate it. We're, I'm happy to open the floor with any questions or feel free to follow up via email with questions and our contact details are there if you would like to do so. Okay. I don't see any questions in the chat, but um, I'm happy to, to stay on the line if you, if you would like to um, ask any. Yeah, again, I suppose, and look, subsequent to this, people might, questions might occur to yeah. people. They're thinking, regretting, perhaps, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't ask this question or ask that question. Again, just encourage you all, reach out to either Gillian or myself. We're more than happy to to have that chat and with we, you. And we'll, we'll feed those questions as well if, if you want to, for, for example, to Seamus or to... Um, yes, to yeah, or pass them on, okay. indeed, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks so many for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. And also thanks to the support from Tom and to Ian in setting all of this up. So thanks a million. Thanks very much, Julian. We'll bring the session to a close. So thanks very Great. much, everyone. Thanks. Take care. See you. Bye now.